Oftentimes, when it comes to data labeling and annotation, one approach that teams like to take is evaluating the efficacy of using programmatic labeling approaches by virtue of labeling functions to speed up their labeling operations. And so in this video, what we're going to do is see what are all the different workflows around how we can perform these labeling function based approaches within Labelbox. But before diving in just a bit of context around labeling functions, think of labeling functions as a set of rules or instructions that you follow in order to help automatically assign labels or categories to your data. This is especially useful when working with large data sets where manually labeling each piece of data could be lengthy or impractical. Nowadays, there's plenty of foundation models out there that can help when it comes to doing these sorts of zero-shot rules-based tasks at scale. For example, using regular expressions to identify phone numbers or zip codes or currencies. So without having to train any models from scratch, you're able to simply call a GPTX API and have it do any of those tasks. Now this can work, but oftentimes the sheer nature of these generative AI models is that there may be issues around hallucination or there may be custom business level logic that you may want to ensconce in your labeling workflows. Generative AI models are also not inherently meant to address rules-based approaches as are typically found in custom business level logic or regex expressions. And so in these situations, having the ability to cook up custom labeling functions can be helpful. So let's imagine you have a data set of texts like comments pertaining to product reviews, and your goal is to do some basic sentiment analysis. So identify positive, negative, or neutral across our different comments. So we see our data set over here. If we navigate over to our coding environment and install the appropriate setup steps, the first step that we want to do is come up with several different rules or labeling functions based on keywords, common phrases, heuristics, or knowledge sources that are commonly associated or attributed to our different sentiment categories. So as an example, a rule might be if the text contains the words happy or excellent or delighted, then we want to use that as the anchor for our keywords and assign a positive label. Similarly, if the text contains any of the negative words that we see over here, that serves as the basis for our negative keywords and we want to assign a negative label. Sometimes there might be a comment that's ambiguous or contains both positive and negative words. So as an example, this could be something like, I love how this product looks, but I hate how it works. And in such cases, labeling functions can be designed with more nuanced rules to decide the overall sentiment, such as considering the context or the number of positive versus negative words. So in this case, we're using a library like text blob to help with that. And the idea is that we can define several of these labeling functions as we scroll down this list. And all it's doing is it's returning true if the text meets the criteria and false otherwise. And so now that we have all of these labeling functions, the next step we may want to do is aggregate the outputs from these labeling functions to make a more accurate and reliable prediction about the text sentiment using an aggregation approach of our choice. So whether that's majority voting, uh, weighted voting, or any other voting based technique. This process where we're taking several noisy or weak labels and aggregating them to a strong label using an aggregation technique is commonly referred to as weak supervision. Each labeling function can essentially be thought of as a quote unquote expert that provides its opinion on how a data point should be labeled, but these experts may not always be right. And so the idea is we want to amortize the cost of these potentially noisy or weaker labels 
by coming up with our strong label. And so if we were to go with a majority voting based approach, the idea here is that we define our classes that we see over here. We define our function or aggregation function. And what it's doing is it's calling each of the rules based labeling function that we've defined up above. And once again, if it's meeting the criteria, then we're tallying up a score for our different labels. So you go ahead and do that for positive, for negative, for neutral. And the end result of this is if we scroll all the way down, we're taking the max score and the max label associated with the max score and assigning that as our final sentiment value. And over here, we see this on a sample piece of text and it returns positive as is expected and the next step is to go ahead and iterate through all of our text assets in our data set. And we attribute and receive the row data value over here. We call the aggregation function, which returns our prediction for the sentiment using the rules based functions that we had seen above. We construct the Python annotation. So we say that this is the schema in our ontology, the sentiment schema that we see over here. So this schema, we want to assign the value of whatever is returned from our aggregation function. Go ahead and do that. We construct and collect all of our labels. And at the very end, we run the label import job to upsert all of these labels into label box just like we have seen over here for the labels we can do the same thing for the metadata as well so in this case we are defining metadata fields for whether or not the text contains a phone number whether or not the text contains a hashtag we've defined those labeling functions up over here as we can see in these two functions and once again we're saying if it meets that criteria then we want to set the metadata value to be whatever is returned from that labeling function. And we go ahead and bulk upsert those metadata fields as well. And once this is all done, we can navigate over to the UI. And if we click on the analytics view, we see our sentiment. These are the labels that are a result of running the labeling functions that we had just seen in the notebook. So the result of that is around 46% of our text has been labeled as neutral, 36% is positive, 17% is negative. If we wanted to click into one of the specific classes, we can see the sentiment for negative. There's around 10,000 such records. Similarly, if we wanted to observe what the metadata distribution looks like. We can see that for the phone numbers, for the hashtags, and if we were to click on, let's say all the text that contains hashtags, we see around 164 results. And as a sanity check, we can see that they contain hashtags. So the benefit of this approach is that there's obviously efficiency. So this approach quickly labels large data sets, saving time and effort. You can easily add, remove, or adjust rules as you discover new patterns in how sentiments are expressed. So over time, if there's variations in uh, the way that vernacular or jargon or slang is being used across our text, we can simply define that in our labeling functions over here. And as you are finding rules in your system processes, the accuracy of your sentiment analysis can improve over time as well. So this wraps up how we can do labeling functions within the SDK and bring that into the UI. The next step we'll see is how we can perform rules-based processes within the label box user interface. Now that we've seen how to leverage labeling functions by using the SDK to bulk label our data, 
The next step is to see how we can accomplish similar workflows from the user interface. One of the first features we can take advantage of in Catalog is the Find Text feature. What this allows the user to do is search for raw text occurrences of a specific word or sequence of words across their data set. As an example, if I want to find all occurrences of the word happy, I can go ahead and type that in. And now I see all of my data rows that contain the words happy. From here, what I can do is I can save this as a slice. So we can name this as happy raw text search, hit save. And now anytime new data gets added that meets the filtering criteria, so in this case, it contains the word happy, it'll automatically get added to the slice. This is equivalent to writing a similar Python function that does a substring match or raw text search to match the specific word that we're looking for. Now from here, I can also take advantage of the similarity search. So if I wanted to select a subset of these data rows and click similar to selection, we're leveraging the built-in embeddings that get automatically generated, in this case, the MPNet embeddings. And instead of looking just for the raw text of happy, I'm also looking for text that has the overall theme or structure of happiness. Now from here, what I can do is select all of these data rows. I can toggle the confidence if I uh, feel like I want to make that even finer granularity. And I can add a pre-label or I can add some metadata. So if I wanted to add metadata, I can select that option, hit the emotion category and say that this is all happy and hit save. And this will apply that metadata to all of my data rows in bulk. Similarly, if I wanted to add a classification, I could do that as well. So depending on whichever classification seems appropriate, I can go ahead and select that and hit submit. Now, these are all workflows that we had previously seen in SDK, but now we can do from the user interface. One of the other things that we had seen in the SDK demo was how to leverage aggregation functions to group together several weaker labels into a strong label. So let's see how we can do that within the user interface. So over here, I've curated a subset of text records that contain hashtags and emojis, as we can see over here. And I want to essentially get labels for whether or not each of these text records contain hashtags and emojis. So what I can do is I can select all of these data rows. I can hit predict with foundry. I can choose a foundation model of choice. So in this case, I'll use GPT-4 and connect that to an ontology. So I'll see that over here and hit generate preview. And once this is done, GPT-4 will come back with predictions on whether or not these texts contain hashtags and emojis. So over here, we can see all the different predictions that GPT-4 has returned. And just to reinforce our predictions, we can do the same thing with Gemini. And we see now Gemini also has returned with different predictions. Now, what this allows us to do is that we can navigate over to our data set and we can deselect all of our data rows. We can select uh, the different models that we had just run. So if the model is GPT-4 and if it is the specific model run that we want and if it's the Gemini model as well. So we select that. And what we're saying is if either of these two models have predicted that it contains hashtag as true. So if Gemini has said yes, and if GPT-4 has said yes, and if we notice that our metadata value that we'd imported earlier from the SDK, if that also says that it has a hashtag, as we see over here, then we have three different signals that are telling us that this contains a hashtag. So that's three different weak labels that we can feel pretty confident about uh, in terms of aggregating that to be our strong label. So we can see that over here. If we look at the has hashtag is set to yes. And if you wanted to see that for Gemini, we can see the has hashtag is yes. So feel pretty confident about all our different signals. And that's when we can go ahead and select our data and hit classification 
choose our project and say, this has a hashtag and hit submit. So one approach where we can leverage weak labels and weak supervision to come up with a strong label for our data.